Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, then welcome to the channel. Okay, so today I am looking at this SG bass guitar, which a kind gentleman gave me uh, with a whole bag of bits. And we're gonna be putting this back together and getting it working as a whole bass again. Uh, I do believe this is a Columbus from the 70s and the previous owner has put all these cool stickers on it uh, all different blues guys on there um, and thank you all for your input on uh, make, helping me decide to keep this as it is uh, what I am going to do is I'm just going to finish off some areas so where it's uh, blank in there I'm going to finish that off in there and uh, add a few more bass players on there because it is a bass guitar um, as well uh the person that did this and who donated this to me told me that he just simply uh downloaded some pictures and printed them off and stuck them on there and varnished over it so that's real cool uh the neck is going to get a sand down um it would have had a uh, binding on there at some point which is not there anymore so it does have this kind of uncomfortable kind of lip there so i'm gonna uh, see if, about rounding that off a little bit um, but yeah, it's going to be a fun, fun project. So I'm really looking forward to getting this one done. So I'm just uh, Googling some bass players and I'll print off a few of these, I think, in black and white and uh, take it from there. I've cut out the uh, pictures, uh, which look pretty cool, all different sizes, and blah, blah, blah. So for the horn here, where it's, uh, where it's blank now, I'm thinking I can put a little Jack Bruce in there. And I've got a little Stevie Ray, double trouble, uh, in there so I can stick that in there and then uh, trim it up and that should solve that blank space there I might have to print some more off I'll do a similar thing in this horn here uh, to try and cover that and any blank space there is um, around the guitar and here as well so I've stuck those down there which will need to be left to go off and what I'll do to add a bit of yellowing to it is uh, rub some coffee over the top um, once it's dried and then trim that off. Uh, I've added a few more pictures on uh, which are glued on and drying as we speak so while they're drying off um, I'm gonna go down and look at the neck I can't trim them up until um, it's completely dry there are a few more little gaps I want to do but I'm gonna leave it at that for the minute and continue with that a little bit later. The neck has issues with the fact that the binding's now missing. Um, so instead of adding a new binding, I'm gonna sand that round and take this finish off and refinish it. Uh, or leave it bare, I don't know, we'll see. Um, it's got some damage on the fretboard, but I'm not too worried about that because it's going to have that vintage -y kind of used look anyway. So I just want to see how how resilient that's going to be, maybe with a bit of E80. Got this old piece here, it's not in a great shape, but we'll see what happens here. And the finish is coming off quite easy, so that's right. So I've actually found it easier to use the square file just to take the wood back and then sand it after to make it smooth. I've got most of the paint off with the 40 grit sandpaper. Uh, I'm gonna get in all the little bits with the Dremel. Had to take the stickers off the back, unfortunately, but that's okay. Uh, I might just take it all off, I don't know. I might leave the front, let's see, let's see how we go. Mm. 
All right, this isn't actually a real Dremel tool. This is a uh, similar thing by Parkside. Much cheaper and much more superior, I think. Uh, link in the description if you want to go check it out. Well, here's all the bits and bobs that I can find that I believe go with the guitar. Um, there's a couple of bits missing, but I'm sure I can manage to put it together with bits I've got around the workshop. Um, some of the hardware like this has been hand-painted. But I think as I'm going for a vintage -y kind of look, because it is old and vintage -y, I might scuff these up a bit and just make them look worn, if that makes sense. What I've started doing here is I've started trimming off the excess paper. It's not 100% dry yet, but it's dry enough to on focus for me to start trimming it around. And then I'll put some more PVA just around there to seal it, let it go off, probably overnight. And then um, I'll uh, try and age the paper a little bit. Although it is going greenish on its own. I quite like that. Um, it's looking quite cool. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm just putting some glue around the edges and then just pushing it sort of behind the paper where it's overlapping like that and then just bringing it back over to stick those edges nice and firm like like so and you can just wipe off the excess a little bit with a damp rag solid when that dries. The glue I'm using is this, it's Gorilla Glue, wood, just wood glue. Right, there's a few more spots I want to do. There's a there's a gap here which I'll want to address. There's this here and possibly the front of that as well. Um, I'm happy how the horns have come out now, much better uh, than being black. Um, apart from that, I'm pretty all right with it. I think it's looking pretty cool. Um, so I'll just uh, see if I can find a picture I can do those bits with, and then I'll get back into. Oh, there's a gap there. I could probably do with putting something on there. Although it doesn't stand out all that much, but it will irk me. I expect. <laughs> I expect. Et voila, so I've covered the whole guitar now, all the blank spots that I could find um, with various images, bass guitars and bass players. There's quite a few bass players on here now and stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm a lot happier with how it all looks now. On the back as well. So that's just all drying off, uh, but it's okay to take it to the workshop and I need to figure out how it all goes back together. So let's go do that. Okay, on the bench. So this is a very unusual guitar, um, very retro. So these must be the pickups. Doesn't look like it wants to fit, yes it does. So that goes there. We've got this one. Again, wire goes through. I think there's a hole there, yeah, there's a hole there, so that's going to go in there. And you've got this thing. Looks like it goes there. Goes there. Um, okay, so that goes like that, right. So this bridge situation is very weird. I'm figuring that screws down to there. These, I have a gap which looks like would go in there although it doesn't want to go in there but I should imagine they do that one's just a bit tight yeah there you go and then that would screw into there so the string would go hook into there up through there and then you've got this metal bridge there very strange. Um, so I should imagine that's it. Uh, this is all the electrics. 
to go in it. Uh, and that's it, I think. There's a few knobs missing. A couple of these are broken anyway. So I'll be putting different knobs on it, I expect. Okay, this black hardware has been hand painted. I'm gonna, I wanna scuff it up a bit. Just a bit old. More like it's worn out and weathered. I mean, I could carry on and take all the black off, but I quite like that. So all I'm doing now is I'm just cleaning everything up with a little bit of white spirit just to clean it all. Um, and then you can see what it actually looks like. Uh, the neck's come out pretty good. I'm really, really happy. Uh, you can't tell that there was a ridge there at all now from the, where the beading would have been. Apart from that little bit there which I've left. But it's on the underside, so you're not really going to see it. There's a little bit there on the top side as well, but you probably won't see that really. It's not going to affect the playing. Um, the headstock I did actually chop off because it had some damage in this corner and it had been sanded and it was all just wasn't straight. So now it's got a straight headstock. But that's okay. It looks like it's been repaired here or in the factory maybe. There's a separate piece of wood <laughs> glued on there and there's a little bit glued in there, but it's fine. I'm really happy how that's come out. Um, but I'm going to polish these frets up uh, before we go any further. Alright, a little bit of polishing compound and off we go. Oh, all along this fretboard, I don't know if you can see, but there's like black paint or uh, what's left of black paint where it's I don't know why it would have black paint on it but it looks like it's been painted black and then someone's stripped it off or I don't know but it's got black paint so I'm going to use the buffing tool just to remove the last bits that they didn't manage to get off just to clean that up Now this is dry, I'm just uh, adding a little bit of coffee, so like a really strong mixture of coffee to these, uh, the new bits that I've put on, just to help them blend in a little bit. They, they, they won't blend in exactly, but it will just add that kind of yellow kind of ness to them. Don't want to overdo it, don't want to soak them too much. Uh, it will just age them a little bit to make them blend in just slightly before I varnish it. That's all. Uh, there you go. So they don't stand out as much as they did before. So I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to varnish it. And um, what I've done here with the neck is I've used the same coffee, what I've got left. And I'm just putting coats and coats on the neck. Uh, which is going to darken it up real nice. Yeah. And with this you can do as many coats as you like. It soaks in and it dries quite quickly. Uh, probably five minutes or so between each go. And obviously the more you do it, the darker it's going to become. It will stain your fingers though. So if you don't want your fingers stained, then wear gloves. But I'm not too bothered. Um, and literally just just keep rolling in. So what I did is I put like two teaspoons of coffee granules, instant coffee granules in a cup and then a tiny bit of water you just get a really strong mix and you can just keep going and going with that as many times as you like the good old varnish, this is acrylic varnish that I use on all my guitars and we're just going to plaster it on here to seal it all up yeah you know the drill right, let's get these tuners on I've rubbed all this down with some wire wool it's really smooth and it's lovely loving that next come up real good happy happy so I'm just gonna put this together now so they go in there like that very tight 
Indeedy. And that. Seems like that. Is it? Yes. Like that. Yeah, baby. Okay. Right, so here's the wiring. So we've got obviously tone, tone, volume, volume. The ones with the uh, capacitors on, which we will do, are the tones. Uh, so that's obviously the red or the pink now, which goes to the humbucker at the front, which will be the bottom hole. Why is it so tight? It's the stickers that are stopping it coming out, I think. Yep, yep, just. The red one, when it's tone, will be the bottom one. Mm. A weather. You put a wafer on. And that's going to nut. Just manipulate the hole. Nice. And then the jack sockets. Mm -hmm. Splendigo! Okay, there's two holes to feed the wires. The pickups go through here, so let's do the red one first because that's the longest. Shoving in the hole. Oh, come out the wrong hole. So uh, one would say there must be another hole. There's actually a hole down here as well. Another hole. So that's that hole. Ah, oh, it's terrible when you get the wrong hole. So, you could use a block connector, you could solder them together, do whatever you want to do. So, I decided to test it as a go, so I've attached the wires. Pickup works. Okay, all pickups working. Splendid! We'll put that back. That goes there. No neck hole. So the only knobs I've got are these silver ones. Uh, which won't look out of place obviously not the original knobs but at least it matches matches the pickups 